Today, I will go through the process that I use to create patterns for new leather craft projects. I will show the different stages of pattern making, starting with a concept design, designing patterns with software, and then making paper and leather prototypes for testing. I am going to show my own work process on a handbag pattern that I am working on while I go through the steps. The first step when designing a new pattern is to make a list of all the details that need to be considered in the design. This includes the type and thickness of materials, project hardware such as zippers, and the basic design features. You also need to consider your construction method here, about how you'll be finishing edges, and whether they will be burnished, painted, or folded, as it will affect how you design your pattern. For my handbag project, the important details are the type of closing method, in this case using a zipper, and the construction method, for which I do not want to turn the bag. I plan to have the gusset edges exposed and painted. This list of details can be added to or removed from later as you continue with the design of your project, but it is very helpful to keep track of these so you do not miss any of the details that you originally planned. The next step is to sketch concept designs of your project. This is the part of the process where you let your imagination go wild and experiment with new ideas and features. Depending on how complex your project is, you may require multiple drawings of how the project looks in its intermediate and final stage, as well as when it's folded, unfolded, front, back and side views, and any hidden features in the project such as pockets. Within this stage, you should also be considering the order in which you glue and stitch the different pieces that make up the project, as well as when you will be needing to finish off edges that will be difficult to access later on in the assembly. For my handbag project, the interface between the zipper section and the gussets are really important to get correct, as well as the placement of the D-rings for the shoulder strap. When you're designing a project, make sure to also put in a bit of personal flair to make your project more unique. Some ways to do this is by creating a new and interesting design or color choices, including lining, thread, or edge paint color. You can also include your maker's stamp in a prominent position on the project. At the end of this stage, you should have the basic sketches of all the different parts of your project and the basic shape of all the pattern pieces. The next step is to begin creating the pattern design using software. The main benefit to using software is that it makes it easy to make both big and small adjustments as you refine your project. It also helps that it does not take up any physical space and you can easily print the pattern when you want to use it. In terms of software used, the most popular is graphic design software, such as Adobe Illustrator, but it can also be done with CAD software. Personally, I like to use AutoCAD because I have prior experience with this software, but there is also free CAD software and free graphic design software available. I will leave links to these software in the video description. Here, I am using NanoCAD to design the pattern for my handbag project. This software is free to use and very similar to AutoCAD. Whichever software you decide to use for your pattern design, it will always take time to learn to use it effectively. However, I think it is worth the time if you are interested in designing and making patterns. When you are designing your pattern, make sure that you take account of the paper size and scaling. One way to do this is by including a scaling checkbox where you can check it can be printed correctly before continuing design work. Including details like stitching lines and stitching holes is not necessary for the pattern. However, it will help you to better plan and size the pieces of the project. You do not need to design the whole project at one time. You can design it in stages and print and test small sections before continuing on with the design. You should always use real world objects or existing products to get an idea of how big you want things to be. That is always a good starting point, rather than coming up with a random dimension to start off with. We can spend a lot of time making a pattern on a computer and making a lot of small adjustments. However, we are doing work in a 2D environment, whereas the final project is in three dimensions. The next step is to test the pattern by printing it out and building a paper prototype. This is a simple step 
that it can save you a lot of problems later on, especially on large projects. You can do basic tests on the prototype, such as using credit cards or a passport to test out your pattern. You will also be better able to gauge the size of your project and then later adjust the scale of the entire pattern on your computer if required. Modifying your pattern and testing paper prototypes through multiple iterations is a normal part of the design process and can save a lot of time and leather later on. This is my paper prototype that I have assembled here for testing. The key area for my project is the interface between the zipper gusset and the side gusset and how to fit in the D-ring for the strap. Any problem areas that are found in the paper prototype can be easily adjusted in your pattern design. The next step after you are happy with your paper prototype is to start using leather. However, you do not need to jump straight away to your most expensive leather. Sometimes the best way is to make small components for testing, or you could even make the full size project but using a less expensive material so you can iron out all of the issues. Then when you come to make your final project, you can be confident when working with expensive materials that the project will work out well. Testing a design with leather is a step up from testing with paper, as the paper will not reveal any issues related to folding or molded parts of the leather project, or where thickness is an important issue. At this point, I have my pattern for my handbag project complete, and I'm ready to begin making it. This is, however, a large and time-consuming project, so I will not start working on it just yet. I will be making a video when I make this handbag in future, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out. If you have any questions relating to pattern making or project design, feel free to leave it in the comment below. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Mm -hmm.